Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's another time, another moment to get wisdom for so winning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wisdom for so winning. Oh, he paid a debt he did not owe. I hold a debt I could not pay. I need that someone to wash my sins away. Ah, but now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. Yes, he paid the debt. He did not hurt. I heard the debt. I could not pay. I need that someone to wash my sins away. But now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Be exalted. Bata ye man de yata, ye de te yata. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I worship you. Receive all the glory. Receive all the praise. Thank you, O God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, last week, Last week we uh, we looked at uh, some likely questions one may encounter in the course of carrying out evangelism, you know. But more questions crept up, more questions came up, and so today we'll be doing a part two of it. So that we would treat some of the questions that were asked. So more questions came up, and so when I need to respond to the questions using this opportunity, so I will target part two of likely questions one may encounter in the course of evangelism. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, there might be a part three. It depends. Probably you still have some other more questions. After you listen to this, and there are still questions, as God helps us, if Christ still tarries, we will just bring up the questions, bring the questions. May not be likely questions in the course of evangelism. Can you be a general question? In the course of listening to the message, you have questions you can ask. Praise the Lord. So today, we are going to be treating questions like, oh, okay, the first question that I was asked is, I will go to church. After, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will not go to church. After all, the Bible says we are two or three are gathered together in His name. Is there. The other question is, uh, who wrote the Bible? They are just deceiving you people who wrote the Bible. They are just deceiving you people. There's another question. Uh, when the end comes, are we going to be on earth or in heaven? When the end comes, are we going to be on earth or in heaven? There are other questions that uh, only 144,000 are going to heaven. You understand? Uh, statements like, oh, we have been hearing about the second coming of Christ. 
from the time of our four forefathers. It's not coming again. You understand? Or churches everywhere. I look at churches everywhere. You're seen on the rise. Okay? So we're going to treat these and more. Praise the Lord as God is helping us. So please, I want you to pay keen interest, listen attentively. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the very first question says, I will not go to church. After all, the Bible says, we are two or three are gathered together. Is there in the midst of them? Okay. Although I said something close to this last week, I answered the question close to this last week. Amen. I want to answer a question like, must I go to church? I think uh, the answer can also be gotten from there. But let me throw a little more light on it. Amen. Uh, when somebody tells you I can worship God with my family at home, so I mustn't go to church. No. Let the person know. First and foremost, we have become the church. And being the church, the church cannot be rebellious against God. God loves gathering. The Bible says, how precious and how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You understand? Let the person know that this is what God loves. Give him some Bible verse. At least for somebody who tells you to tell you that uh, after I can worship God in my house with my family, it means the person believes in the Bible. And so also open the Bible to that person and read some verses. You know, the one I gave us last week was Psalm 133. That can help. He said, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. It is good in the sight of the Lord. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirt of his garment, as the dew of Hamo, and so on. So you can read scripture like that. You can read Hebrew, Hebrew 10 verse 25 that says, Not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. What is the manner of some? The manner of some is to forsake the assembly of believers. That's the manner of some. And so God is not pleased when that practice is carried, is being carried out. He says, not forsaking the assembly. Assembly means gathering. That's assembly. Assembly means gathering. So God delight in gathering. Not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as the manner of some is. The manner of some is to forsake. So God is not happy. God is not pleased. He said, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as they see the day approaching. Praise the Lord. You know, of course, God is in the place where two or three are gathered together. That's why we do morning devotion. We do house fellowship. It's there. You know why? Not because that is what that, that is that is not because God does not want us to go to church. No, because we are the church. And being the church, we are a mobile church. We are the church. But we need to gather. You can give the person's other example. In the Old Testament, God desired, God asked David to build him a house. Which Solomon eventually built. And the prayer was said by Solomon that Lord, anybody prays in this place, let him be answered and so on. You understand? They may say, oh, we are not going in the Old Testament. No. 
Jesus Christ never came to destroy the law. Even Jesus Christ worshipped in the temple. He was always in the temple. At the age of 12, he was in the temple. He was always in the temple. It was in the temple. He read the, 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 the Bible verse, that was the scripture that was written about him. So tell him, tell such a person that uh, will tell you, oh, I can gather my family and be a church and worship God. Or I can worship online. I know somebody, as in, let me, okay, let me know, I know of somebody that says he worship online. That he has been to many churches and he does not like what they are doing. So there is a particular ministry. He does not have access to that place. He can't go there. So what he does is he worship online. And so on. Well, it's really not ideal. It's not ideal. It's good to be in a gathering. To be in a place where saints gathered. Praise the Lord. So, I don't really... That is all I can just say. Let's not, we can't go against the Bible. We can't do anything against what the Word of God is saying. Amen. The other question is, uh, who wrote the Bible? They are deceiving you with the Bible. Now, the Bible, of course, was written by men. But men that were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So you can let them know, yes, of course, the Bible was not written by ghosts. It was written by men. Unlike some other book that they will tell you uh, an angel just brought down or whatsoever. No, the Bible was written by men. Men that were inspired. So that is where you start from. You can give them scripture like, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for righteousness, and so on. You know? So that is in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. Also, you can also give them 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1. 20 and 21 that says knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men of God speak holy men of God speak as they were moved of course they may not accept these they may say oh you are still telling me from the bible they may need further evidence. Now, let me tell you, give you some other further evidences. Praise the Lord. Now, there are other evidences you can give them. There is even scientific evidence. <laughs> we have this scientific evidence. We have the historical historical uh, evidence, uh, our accuracy, the unity of the Bible, and so on. When we talk about when, when I say scientific evidence, now, this is what I mean. Now, before then, let them know that this Bible was written. We're talking about the unity of the Bible. This Bible was written by over 40 different authors. And they wrote the Bible... In a, a period of over 1,600 years. Not a book that was written in one year, or two years, or three years. Over 1,600 years. That was the length of time it took to write the Bible. And it was written in 13 different countries you understand 13 different countries the bible is made up of 66 different books you understand you know we have the old testament and the new testament 
and all these writers, they never knew themselves. You understand? They never knew themselves. And look at it from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible is saying one thing. It's talking about how man fell, how God planned to redeem, redeem man, Prof- prophecy about how God will redeem man, how God eventually redeemed man, and so on. There are what I'm trying to bring out is because, because somebody most of the times person that is doubting the authenticity of the Bible. Of most of the time, they don't. If you give them evidence from the Bible, they may not want to accept. They may not want to even believe you because you are still te- you are still opening the Bible for them to give you tell you. Oh, the Bible is written by man. You understand? Of course, we can't go outside of the Bible. You understand? You know, for example, Job twenty six verse seven, which says. God stretched out the knots over the empty place. He stretched out the knot over the empty place and hanged the earth upon nothing. And hanged the earth upon nothing. So how did they know that the earth is not is not being heard by anything? That can even be scientific evidence. The earth, you know, it, at the time the Bible was written, it was, I don't want to use the word the stone age or whatsoever. I don't know, they don't, they don't, I don't really have, I don't know the age. Of course, we know, different, we know that there, are, there have been different ages, the stone age, age, the iron age and so on, you know. But there was no scientific discovery. But so how... It, it it can this can only be written through inspiration that the earth is being the earth is being hanged upon nothing and this has been discovered scientifically you understand what about historical evidence look at history historical accuracy you know while we're growing up, we're reading the Bible, talks about uh, how God delivered the Israelites from Egypt, how Jesus walked on the sea, or the places Jesus visited. Those days, we also had the same mindset that, oh, all these things are your story. But as we grow, we discover that these things are still there. They are still there as we speak. Some of these evidences, there are discoveries today that point that that points to the Bible. Praise the Lord. So there are many points to give to such people that normally doubt the authenticity of the Bible. Even look at the prophecy, the accuracy of prophecy, the accuracy of prophecy. You understand? It was it is in the Bible we learned about the prophet prophecy about Jesus. He came. It was prophesied that a Messiah would come. He came. He left, and he promised he would come again, and he will come again it's in the Bible. Not that alone. Look at what is happening on it presently they are as a result of biblical prophecy now for example the bible speaks about the mark of the beast how everyone that will miss the rapture that will reject jesus will be forced to take the mark of the beasts now we are seeing evidences around us how that will happen I'm not saying the mark of the beast is here already, but I'm saying we are seeing evidences around us to let us know how the mark of the beasts will eventually happen. So the point I'm making is there are 
evidences. There are proof. There are things. There are pointers to the fact that everything the Bible is saying is happening. Sorry that even the blind can see. So anybody that says doubt the authenticity of the Bible or the origin of the Bible or who wrote the Bible, they need to have a rethink. Praise the Lord. So it was written, it's written by different people from different continents, different countries. And at the end, they are all writing the same thing. There is no book on earth that is as accurate as the Bible. You know, we talked about the synoptic gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, the synoptic, similar. They were all writing about Jesus. They wrote from different places, and yet they are writing the same thing. So let me not go further on that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. The other question is, uh, when the end comes, are we going to be on earth or in heaven? Now, you know, in one of our studies, I have taught on the millennial reign of Christ. The millennial reign of Christ. I'm going to just summarize this because it's a very long teaching under uh, eschatology but let me try and summarize it now the, the thing is this we are going to finally be on earth that is a summary of the, of the answer but how will it go let me this is how it will go first and foremost there's going to be the rapture the church will be raptured to meet with christ you can find that in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet with the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be. That is the rapture. Though the word rapture was not used in the Bible. So we're going to be raptured. Then when the church is raptured, the earth will go through seven years of tribulation. You understand? After the seven years of tribulation, there will be the marriage supper going on in heaven. Amen. Why this... uh, why the marriage supper after the seven years then christ will come back to earth that is the second coming the rapture is not the second coming there will be a second coming after the marriage supper christ will come back to the earth and it's going to reign a thousand years here on earth a thousand years a thousand years of peace presently the world is clamoring for peace this present age cannot guarantee cannot give peace you understand? They are trying to look for. Uh, uh, talk, they are talking about peace and so on. Bible says, when you hear of peace, 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 you know that they, you know that that is doom. That is destruction coming. That is destruction. You know, you can see that in First Thessalonians five. First Thessalonians five, verse three says. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So when men are saying peace, peace, you know that sudden destruction is there. So what what the point is, this, our government, World Health Organization, UN, or whatsoever, they can never give this earth peace. So Christ will come for a thousand years on earth. 
meaning the saint that raptured before, that raptured before, they will come back to this earth. The saint that raptured, the saint that was able to endure the great tribulation, the tribulation and the great tribulation. The tribulation itself is divided into two. We have the tribulation and the great tribulation. The tribulation is when the Antichrist is trying to make peace. But that's not the point. That's not the point. Now, the Christ coming back after his seven years of tribulation to rule on earth a thousand years. Now, during this uh, a thousand years reign of Christ. Okay, let me just, you can, you can see that in Revelation 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he lay hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nation no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be lose a little season. Now, look at what's happening here. Christ will come back and establish his kingdom, his throne here on earth, and will rule the earth in a perfect peace. When we say peace, let me describe how the peace will look like. Peace does not just mean only when nation and nation refuse to fight. No. I want to talk about peace. Whereby even peace with animal. A child can pick up snake. You touch lion, cobra. Those things will not hurt. So that's a period of a thousand years. The millennial reign. Then after the millennial reign. After the thousand years reign of Christ. The Bible says... This earth we melt. There are many scriptural references, but let me summarize the whole thing from uh, Revelation 21 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth we have passed away, and there was no more sea. You understand? You can also get that some of those uh, scriptures in Isaiah. For behold, I create new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall be remembered no more, nor come into mind. That's Revelation 65. Sorry, Isaiah 65. If you read the book of Isaiah from 61, 62, 66, even Isaiah 66, 22 says, For a new heaven and a new earth. I see, it says, As Say for us the new heaven and the new earth which I see, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord. So shall your seed and your name remain. Now look at it. The way it was in the Garden of Eden, that is the way it will eventually be. We are going, God never intend that man stays in heaven. What was God's original plan from the beginning? Look at it. From the very beginning, when God created the Garden of Eden and placed man there. That is how it will eventually be. Such that you won't know the difference between even heaven and earth. God originally created man to rule the earth. For it was ruined by, by the first Adam. This time around, Satan will no longer be on the earth to deceive man. After the millennial reign, he will be lost a little while. After a little deception, he will draw a lot of people again. But after that period, he will be forever bound. Hell, fire, that's when hell fell will be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second that Satan will remain there for eternity. Then we will enjoy the new garden of Eden, the way God created it from the beginning. Now, the way God originated the earth 
was such that he will always come and have fellowship with men on earth. He will come and have fellowship with men on the earth. Hallelujah. That is how it will eventually be. This time around, men will know no sin. Your heart will not, it will not imagine evil. Cain killed Abel because Satan was already on the earth to deceive man. The serpent deceived Eve because Satan was already there. Sodom and Gomorrah were in their immoral act. The, the, the evil that happened in the Old Testament were happening because Satan was on earth. After the great flood of Noah, it was remaining only Noah and his family. Sin crop, crept in again. Why? Because Satan was still on the earth. But after God made the new heaven and the new earth, this time around, Satan is no more. The way God used to fellowship with Adam in the Garden of Eden, he will come, have fellowship with man. That is how it will eventually be such that even while you are on earth, you have access to heaven. There is a, com- a, a communion between heaven and earth. So that is the best I can say on this platform. Except there is another occasion to talk to, to talk about uh, more on eschatology. Okay, that's on on, on eschatological uh, teaching. Praise the Lord. So in summarizing that is that. Uh, uh, when the end comes, where are we going to be on earth or in heaven? On earth, but not this present earth. Even this present earth, scientists say it will not last for long. So not this present earth. Even scientists that do not believe in the Bible know that this present earth will not last uh, for long. Not this present earth. There's another eschatological question here that says, that only 144 people are going to heaven. And so why are we wasting our time serving the Lord if only 144,000 will make it to heaven? How do I summarize this? These are teachings on the, on, the, on the end time. I have treated all of these things. I have the handouts. I have treated them in the church. So let me see how I can also summarize that. Now look at it. Praise the Lord. First and foremost, you must let them know that God does not want anyone to go to hell. Does not want anyone to go to hell. It says, Say unto them in the book of Ezekiel 33, 11, I have no pleasure in the death of the sinner, but that the sinner turn from their evil ways and live. He wants all men to be saved. That is God. He wants all men to be saved. So Psalm 1, 1, 6, verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now, if you meet the requirement of entry heaven, you will be there. Now look at the controversy here. Originally, salvation was meant for the Jews, for the people of Israel. For the Jews, but they rejected salvation. They rejected the Messiah. And so salvation came to the Gentiles, came to us. We are not partakers of the common wealth of Israel. Praise the Lord. So we have been adopted in. We are no longer alien or stranger to that common wealth. So we have not. We are now citizen. You understand? Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, For our citizenship is in heaven. Is in heaven. Okay? Now, where does the case of 144,000 come from? I will explain that very briefly. Let me explain that. How do I explain? Let me explain that now, okay? Uh... 
Uh, now, this, if, this case of 144,000, this is even after salvation, after the rapture, after the saints have been taken. You understand? These are the people that will escape the great tribulation. You understand? Now, let me read the... Uh, uh, let's let, let me read from uh, Revelation. Revelation chapter fourteen. Revelation chapter fourteen. Let me read from verse one. It says, "Now, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead." Psalm 14, then verse 2 now. See, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard a voice of harper harping with their harp and the song as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. This will be redeemed during the great tribulation. Now, during the tribulation, now look at what is happening. During the tribulation, that is when Israel will be saved. Now, Israel, they are not saved. They are still in their own belief, they do not believe in Jesus. You understand? But God will leave a remnant for him. You know, during the Great Tribulation, that is when they will now know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and they will call upon him. He will save them. By then, Israel will be saved. The Jews will come to the Lamb Light. You know, this 144 is actually from the 12 tribe of Israel. That 12 tribe of Israel, each tribe will be having 12,000. Each tribe. Each tribe. You can get that in Revelation chapter 7. You understand? Revelation chapter 7 from verse 4. He said, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribe of the children of Israel, and of Judah were sealed twelve thousand, and so on Reuben, Issachar, and so on twelve twelve thousand. You understand? So these are the people. This is this is happening during the great tribulation. And not that alone, not that alone, that Revelation chapter 7. If you read verse 9, look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, And after this I beheld, and lo, that after the 144,000, after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. Of all the nations, look at it. No, 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 they're not only Israel now, of all the nations and kindred and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and psalms in their hand. So, you see, after this, after what? After that 144,000. And all of these are people that will escape the tribulation. So in the great tribulation period, some people, some remnant will still be saved. Some people will still be saved. So this is the best way I can uh, say this. So those, so those who have the view that only 144,000 will enter heaven, hmm, they should read further. They should read them. Uh, they should read for that we I just read. You, you can see, even apart from those that were sealed in uh, Revelation chapter 7 from verse 4, from verse 9, there were other multitudes that no man could number. They could not be numbered. 
you understand praise the lord that's the best way i can explain this god bless you so the next question here is we have been hearing about the second coming of christ even from the time of our forefathers so it's no longer coming these stories have been on for ages if you stop deceiving yourself christ is not coming again he will come he will come now look at look at what you will tell people like that huh you know it took it took noah noah over a hundred years to build an ark from the very first he started building the ark god told him it's going to rain flood destroy the earth and noah warned the people they refused to believe him they may believe from the very beginning but after a long time just imagine somebody building an ark for over a hundred years or thereabouts and they are not seeing any sign of rain the people were tired of believing. They all drew back and never believed again. That is what is still happening today. So the people should be made to know that when, for example, when the flood of Noah eventually came, the Bible says in the book of Matthew 24, if you read Matthew 24 from verse 35, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away. Matthew 24 from verse 30, 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Among his words is that he will come again. When you read John 14 from verse 1, Jesus Christ says, I will come again and I will take you unto myself. I'm going to my Father to prepare a place for you and I will come again. That is Jesus. I will come again means I will come again. My ways shall not pass away. This heaven and earth will pass away, as I've said before. 36, 36 of man, 224 says, But of that day and hour, no man knows. Not even the angel, angels in heaven. 37 says, But as the days of Noah are weird, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of days that were before the flood, they were eating and they were drinking. They were marrying and they were being given out in marriages until the day that Noah entered the ark. They knew it not. The flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Let them know. Encourage them not to be tired of waiting. The people in the days of Noah, they were tired of waiting. And so they gave up believing. But that never stopped what God had already declared would happen. It eventually happened. So encourage people that doubt the second coming. That say we have been hearing of it. Jesus Christ himself preached it. He said, when you go out, tell the world to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There are skeptic, skeptic. When you read Second Peter, Second Peter three, he said, knowing this first that they shall come in the last days, scoffers walking after the own lost and they'll be saying where is the promise of his coming since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning where is the promise of his coming so these people they have been there they have been there let them know that christ is coming again and is coming no man knows but the the fact the reality on ground is, is at the door right now. Very, very near. Closer than when they first knew it or believed it. Praise the Lord. So Christ has promised his coming again. He gave us signs. All the signs are here with us. And the last question here is, churches everywhere, yet sin on the rise. There are churches everywhere. 
That is what people will tell you when you go on evangelism. There are churches everywhere. Why is there sin on the increase? <laughs> well, you may tell them that the, the sin will still continue to rise because they are biblical prophecy. They are prophetic. Everything We are living in an age of prophecy right now. We are living in an era of prophecies. For example, Matthew 24. Matthew 24 verse 11 says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. To tell them that the churches will still continue to creep up. You understand? Like these false prophets now, they already have their church. They also, tra- they also, they still have people they are training. They still have sons in the ministry that those that will still go and set up their own, that have not built their church. Those that will still go and build their church. He says, for many false prophets shall rise. It is a prophecy. They will rise. And verse 12 says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was go. The, the iniquity shall abound. Many iniquity will become everywhere. Sin everywhere. Sin every sin. Iniquity shall abound. So because of this, the love of many shall was go. The thirteen says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure. Fourteen says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, everywhere. This gospel shall be preached everywhere. Tell them that churches will continue to spring up. Good ones and bad ones. Good ones and bad ones. And the majority most, let me me say majority, but good ones and bad ones will be, we continue to spring up. We continue to arise. So it's a prophecy. It, it, these are prophetic. It's a prophecy that false prophets shall arise and they shall deceive many. Jesus Christ says, let no man deceive you. You understand? So, uh, churches everywhere yet sin on the rise, evil on the increase. They are prophetic. So they will continue to be until Jesus comes. But however... The Lord knows how to secure and save His own. The Lord will keep you from these evil days. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will cause His face to shine upon you. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will give you the grace that you need to tackle every situation when when you go out. He says, do not be afraid of their faces. Do not be afraid of what you will say. At the right time, the right ways shall come. I pray the Lord will grant you grace to yield and obey His word today. God bless you and establish His ways in your hearts. Amen. God bless you.